Ferry was recorded in the Doomsday Book, and the ferry service has been running from here for over 600 years, dating back to 1396. The service as we know it today was created by the engineer William Carson, who took charge of Mersey Ferries, and in 1863 constructed the floating landing stages. Carson suffered much criticism with predictions that the first storms of winter would carry the landing stages away. Nevertheless, as you can see, his idea has stood the test of time and is still the most convenient way of getting passengers on and off the ferry. You can now see the 27 million pound roll-on, roll-off ferry token connecting the Wirral with Belfast and Dublin. It's along this stretch of shoreline where the famous one o'clock gun used to stand. A cannon was fired from here at one o'clock every afternoon, except Sundays and back holidays, and was used by ships to check their chronometers. This event finally stopped on the 18th of July, 1969. If you look over towards Liverpool, you get a fine view of Liverpool's two cathedrals and the Museum of Liverpool. The museum is the largest newly built national museum in the UK for over a hundred years. The story of Liverpool is told through displays, drawn from exhibits related to the city from National Museum Liverpool's entire collection. Visitors can explore how the port, its people and their creative and sporting history have shaped the city. The Red Sandstone Anglican Cathedral, designed by Sir Giles Gilbert Scott when he was only 23, took 74 years to build and is the largest Anglican cathedral in the world. To the left, the delicate spires of the Metropolitan Catholic Cathedral of Christ the King top an enormous and beautiful stained glass lantern, which during the day projects a vivid display of light radiating throughout its interior. The tall square brick tower close to the river is the ventilation shaft and pumping station for the Queensway Road Tunnel, used for pumping out the fumes from the traffic which uses the tunnel every day. It took nine years to build and was opened in 1934 by King George V and Queen Mary. Far down below us now are the road and rail tunnels which cross under the River Mersey. As we approach Woodside Terminal, you can see in the distance some of the elegant Victorian architecture built during Birkenhead's heyday. Birkenhead was the first town in Europe to operate a dedicated passenger tramway, and the first ever public park was built here, an idea of William Laird, the famous shipbuilder. It was paid for by the council and designed by Joseph Paxton, the famous designer of the Crystal Palace that featured in the Great Exhibition of 1851. The park, officially opened in 1847, offered opportunities for recreation to all Birkenhead residents, with the formation of a number of park-based clubs. Paxton's design was later copied on a much grander scale by an American named Olmsted, who co-designed New York's Central Park. The clock tower with the green dome is Birkenhead Town Hall, which stands in the elegant Hamilton Square, one of the finest Victorian squares in Britain, and which apart from Trafalgar Square, has the most grade one listed buildings in 